So what I'm going to try and do is recreate this uh, hyperspace sequence effect from 2001 A Space Odyssey using a volumetric light sensitive material in Bryce. Now, the way that volumetric lights in Bryce work is a bit strange, possibly slightly broken, certainly counterintuitive. So in my default scene here, I've got an infinite plane and I'm going to go to the create shelf left click and hold down the mouse button so I can select volume. As things stand it's quite difficult to see the volume slab that's been created when it's not selected so I'm just going to change the family group into this dark brown color so you can see it on the video. Right, select this, modify the material, uh, reset it to a default grey, change it to volume, set the diffuse color up to fully white because it is going to use that uh, it doesn't need diffuse output because I'm going to use a light sensitivity. Uh, I'm going to leave it in its default state at the moment and you can see that uh, we've got a base density of 100, fuzzy factor of 100 and quality of speed of 25 and that affects where the banding appears in it. So I'm just going to check out of there and you can see now that there is this light area and the reason that it's light is because it's being, being stimulated by the sun. So I'm going to turn the sun off in our scene, rendering scene, and now hopefully that will have disappeared. I'll leave uh, shadows on for the moment. I might turn them off in a bit. So if I render this now, you can't see the slab, but it does slow the render times down because it is doing some processing. I'm now going to create a default light source. So I lift it up into the slab, and the slab is now lit again from that point. And I can show it's that point by using ranged render in scene, see if we can spot it, and I'll increase the range to 100 to give it a fair size, well, maybe not 100, let's try 50. So here the ranged light is creating the effect within the slab. I'm going to raise the top of the slab so you can see the range of that light output. Now if I modify the colour of this light output now to, hmm, let's say, red, whoops, that was black, I want red, Oh, orange, close enough. And then I copy and paste that and drag it over here. I've got two ranged light sources. What do you think is going to happen if I modify this color to uh, green? Well, it's not what you think. Both light sources then become green. So if I change this one now to, mm, say, cyan, then that then affects the overall. It, the light, even though it's ranged, is, is somehow affecting the, some kind of colour mixing is going on. I'm not really, whether it's additive or subtractive, I suppose we can determine. So if we do yellow, we know what yellow and what's this one at the moment? Blue. So yellow and, and blue is black apparently. So that should really be grey, I think. Is that, are they opposite in, in complementary colours? Let's see, I know, I know red and green are. So red and red, green. So you see they, that should really sort of be a grey colour I suppose if they're mixing. It's a sort of grey dark colour. But anyway you can see something here is clearly not working as expected. So if I go back and just create an ordinary light source again we'll look at the next problem. Now if I edit this light source and use a gel light and go to procedural and use the output. Let's see if it's gel is it going to be in the diffuse channel? I think so. Hold the shift key down and select basic and use this grid simple. Make sure it is object space output. So here we go. Let's see. Is that going to give us an output? Yes. If I use the gel light directly, you can see there's a lot of noise. This is broken render engine here. There's something about the way the gel lights work that upsets the volumetric materials a bit of a disadvantage. So to overcome this, I'll get rid of that, create my light source, stick it up there, then use Control C, Control V, and then change that using the edit command to a sphere. So this is a default sphere, go into the material here, get rid of the diffuse, go to the transparent color, hold the shift key down, I'll use grid simple again, change to object space, make that fully transparent. Now if I do this, which is more or less the same thing as I did before. I'm just going to lift it up out of the slab so you can see the pattern a bit of, you know, get hold of the, get the 
sphere and light source lift it up a bit hopefully now you can see there's no noise in this but you can see some banding and this banding is a result of well, two things the quality and speed we can reduce banding by increasing the quality which reduces the speed so that gets rid of the bands but there will be some bands directly above where the camera is if we use a very wide field of view so if we change the field of view and this seems to be a rendering issue in the way that the volumetrics are processed in Bryce so now I can sort of project a pattern through this material there is something else to consider with the material here and this is whether or not we have additive when it's light sensitive as you saw when we were doing the different colored lights uh, the lights influence each other and even when something's shielding the light so if the light shining through the the uh, the gel that I've made with this sphere if it's shining through an area that's black it's blocked the light but the light sensitive materials aware of the intensity of that light so it makes the volume cloud turn black so it actually becomes a solid object unlit so if I make it additive what happens there is it behaves more like a transparent fog and if the light doesn't shine on it then it doesn't make the fog become more dense it just allows you to see other lighter bits of the fog through it and at that point we can see the sky through it and everything's got rather bright so I'm going to go uh, to the sky lab and I'm going to uh, disable the sunlight and go to atmosphere I'll, in fact I'll just do this through the outer control here I'll turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black so now we've just got our light source falling on the infinite plane and our slab so to get closer to the effect that I showed you in those pictures at the beginning I'm going to lower the camera down close to the infinite plane and modify the plane so it's a perfect mirror and I'm going to turn global shadow casting off so I don't need to have to turn it off on a per material basis which is back in the Skylab sun and moon and probably save a bit of render time that way as well because we're using the gel property it, uh, it it doesn't really relate to the shadow casting property which is probably how the light sensitive materials pick it up so you can see now I've got a bit of a pattern going I'm going to bank the camera over normally I wouldn't recommend this if you've got a volumetric material in your scene because it can cause crashes but it seems to be okay with this uh, very simple light sensitive slab so I've turned that on its side now and it's a, a matter now I'm going to get the slab out of the way of the sphere if you adjust the position of this it'll affect what the pattern looks like as well as by changing what the pattern is like so I'll just tune it to where, where I fancy the pattern to be and then I'm going to modify the material on the sphere on the outside so going to the material lab here going to the deep text editor I'm going to drag this component over to the next one open up a few of these controls I'll change the color of this to red I'll change the blend mode to difference uh, select this one I increase the frequency of the pattern I'll change this color to say a blue color and then change its mode to interpol plus interference and then that to smooth clip so I'll have a bit more of a pattern going on check out of there check out of there and now I've got a bit more complexity as I said the position of the, the sphere with respect to this slab is going to be what gives us our pattern and we've got a variety of ways we can project using the light source so I'm going to pull this one back and out of the way a bit and you can see the pattern becomes a bit more uniform if I now introduce another light source and pattern then as long as the colors are similar I won't have the blending issue remember with the light sources how as I added more diff more colors and if they were in contrast to one another they tended to result in darker colors so if I copy and paste this pair now and say put this one here in the surface it, it where the colors are, are where, where they're dissimilar you're getting more dark so it'll tend to go darker and if I modify the color output of this uh, one here so if I go into the material for the sphere on the outside and say make this well greenish color and this one I don't know uh, orangey color where the green and the red then combine will tend to result in, in darker patterns still but it'd be quite an interesting effect where you get this sphere close to the surface so I'm gonna 
modify this a little bit, select both of them together. I could group them, I suppose, but it's just as easy because the scene is still fairly simple. And uh, and you can have interesting effects where this uh, is partially buried in the surface, or you can hide it completely by putting it at the back. So here, there's a lot of opportunity to fine-tune the pattern by repositioning the light sources, changing the pattern. You can also change the den depth of the slab itself, so you can make it deeper. That'll uh, tend to slow the render down, but it'll modify the effect of the pattern. Because as, as the surface moves close to the camera, then you can see that the, it becomes more compressed in the middle. And so there is a lot of scope here to change things. You can try turning the additive off, see what effect that has. In this case, very little. So you can see that there's not really a concern on, on that score. But if the density was a lot lower, then that might become more significant. So actually we could just reduce the complexity in this case. You can see that it's sort of made up of different layers in the preview here and it's layered in the slab. So if we take the quality right down then the layers will be more distinct and there'll be sharper transitions and then it might, it might, and I'm not entirely sure until I've tried it, when you change it to additive make a difference. Let's see, nope, not much of a difference there. So as you can see now it's not looking too bad really uh, as far as getting some kind of effect that was fairly similar to uh, to the pattern shown in the images here mm, maybe a bit more glowy these but you could fine tune the materials or you could post work the image or you could use filters within Bryce to create that effect but really I, I suppose that's uh, somewhat beyond the scope of what I wanted to demonstrate just show that uh, there's quite a bit of opportunity here to create novel effects using these light sensitive materials though bear in mind the way they work won't always be the way you expect them to work so uh, until I'll continue experimenting with this until I know all the rules then then I'll make a few more videos uh, along those lines but uh, as things stand I just thought there was a, an interesting little experiment to do Okay then, hope you found that interesting and that you'll have a go at uh, using light sensitive volumetric materials in Bryce 7.1 Pro. Cheers now.